Hey everyone and welcome to ProMix Academy. My name is Carlo Libertini and thanks for hanging out with me today. We're going to do some audio committee conversion. The whole process I'm going to share with you can be done on almost any kind of audio track at all. But I know this technique is super popular when working with drums. We're going to be working with this band, The Gallery, and the song is White Noise Town from ProduceLikeAPro.com, Multitrack Sessions 15. So if you want to follow along, definitely get those multi-tracks and let's make some music. So the first question is, why do I want to do any audio to MIDI conversion here? What is it I'm missing? For me, that element was the snare drum. Sounds a little anemic, great tracks, great band, great energy really really want to do it justice in fact let's listen to the snare drums here's the first track snare top okay here's snare bottom okay and i notice i relabeled this track because it said symbols but there's a lot of snare in here too as well pace the listen doesn't it Sounds kind of like a distant cymbal room mic. Probably going to lower this one down in the mix. All right. Now, step one is identifying. Okay. You know what? I think we could add some more percussive elements to boost that snare. Step one is to identify the issue. We did that. Step two is, okay, I've got two tracks. Which one do I want to convert to MIDI data? Well, they're both pretty good tracks. So in this case, I'm just going to pick the first one. Now, here's the first tip. Prior to audio to MIDI conversion, it's really important to remember that we're going to be using Melodyne, which is integrated, built into Studio One through Audio Random Access technology. Yes, you can use it as an insert if you wanted to, but it's literally part of the heart and soul of this, this program now, making it easier and faster to use than ever before. It'll convert everything for you. And that is the first problem. Because if you look at this snare drum track, there's a lot of little ghost notes and hidden information in there. That's going to get a MIDI note. So it's not going to sound clean, pure, and accurate and give us the detail that we're looking for. So prior to audio to MIDI conversion, we need to clean this up. And I'll show you a trick to do just that. Let's go back to our mixer. And here I'm going to insert a simple gate. And we're going to adjust the gate parameters to just capture the strength of the strongest hits. Just like that, done. Now, I do advise listening to the whole track. There may be certain areas of elements that some audio is still gating through. So this is audio production. You have to listen and do some work. But generally speaking, you could also push the threshold a little bit to capture just the meat and potatoes of those hits too. Being a rock song, it's, it's some good solid wax here. Now what do you want to do? Okay, let's go back to our edit page here. I'm going to right click on the snare drum header with the gate on it, come down to transform to render tracks. We're actually going to replace this track with the printed gate on it. Choose OK, and there you go. Clean, nice hits. Now you can see over here, there's a couple little ghosting notes, little short ones. Let's take a listen here. Now you might be asking yourself, well, if you gate everything out, you're really going to make the drum performance anemic. No, we have snare in the overheads. I've got another snare drum mic. There's lots of snares to work with here, so don't worry about that. We can blend them in. What we're looking here is to reinforce that snare drum. We're going to replace it, and it's going to sound great. Okay, next, what are we going to do? Let's create an instrument track. I'll put it right below that snare drum. And since I'm going to be using Addicted Drums, my favorite, I'm just going to name it AD2 Snare. That's typically what I would call it. But there's no instrument or MIDI data on there yet. First thing we have to do is convert the audio to MIDI, and here we are now. I'm going to right click, for example, there's, there's different ways to do this, but this is the easiest one for me, on the new track, 
And then we're going to choose Edit with Melodyne. And there. Melodyne has analyzed the audio. We can edit the audio in Melodyne if need be. But if you can see the, the this grayish, this greenish yellow line up there, it's telling you that it's also been converted to MIDI for us already. All right, let's zoom in a little bit here. Now, another tip, of course, you want to make sure since we're working with percussive elements, Melodyne is super good at this. Under algorithm, it has successfully detected it at percussive. If for some reason it didn't, then you would come up to algorithm and choose the proper algorithm, whether it's melodic or polyphonic sustain or even universal. So we're going to leave it on percussive. Done. Thank you, Melodyne. Now we can simply take that track, drag it down there, and here are our MIDI notes. But we still don't have an instrument on here. Let's open up our browser. I'm going to select Addicted Drums 2, drag it onto my track, and let it go. Now all we have to do is assign those MIDI notes to trigger the right instrument, the right drum hit. Okay? That's what we want. One of these snares. One of my favorites is this. A little bright sounding, but let's get started with that one. All right, next up, let's double click on the MIDI track. Now, if you don't see the notes, notice that Studio One has detected that we're working with percussive and it's set it to drum MIDI editing and the notes are all up here. Okay, let me go back to the beginning. Let's go to right about here. Here we go. I'm going to switch it to my keyboard view because I like this. This way we could see the notes a little bit better. These are the drum notes. So we can hear that it is it is now triggering Tom 2. We want to trigger the snare, and that's pretty easy. I'm going to, with my selector tool, choose the first note. If you don't hear the notes when you select them, audition notes is another tip for you. You can deactivate this. So if you trigger, if you touch one of these notes or, or edit the velocities, you won't hear anything. If you're not hearing the, the drum, the MIDI trigger drum notes, then make sure Audition Notes is active right there. There's another tip, okay? Now, with that first note selected, I'm going to copy them all and drag them. And here's another tip. You don't want to move them horizontally. You want to keep them in time. So I'm just going to move the notes vertically as a group. There we go. There's our snare. Let's hear how our mix is now developing. Let's, let's uh, take everything off. Here we go. Here's without the new added snare drum element. Here's with. You can already begin to feel where this is going and I'm liking it. I want to go back to my MIDI editor for a second because I think this is important. We talked about velocities earlier, remember? Well, the energy of the performance is preserved here. These first three hits are the strongest and then it drops. Let's zoom out a little bit and see the whole performance here. So audio to MIDI conversion also captures the strength and energy of these hits and you can see the varying levels. This is important too now because you want to edit these for consistency. You could do that in the mix stage with a compressor if you wanted, maybe on the drum bus or snare bus, or you could come in and edit the velocities themselves. I'll give you a quick little dirty fix if you wanted. <laughs> Here under the paint tool, you could choose the line tool, for example, and you could draw a line all the way across them. That would all keep them at the same hit. When would I use this technique? Well, for this technique, this might be a little aggressive for me, but there may be some genres of music, like pop, for example, where you want this kind of steady drum beat. Now you know how to do it. Let's undo it and let's zoom in a little bit. So that's a tip for you. But there are some circumstances where that might work into play. Let's go back with the same line tool. Watch what I can do. Maybe I like that. It's ramping up. Let me undo that and show you how I did it. I got the line tool from the paint. Here's the paint tool. 
and just dragged, drew a line up and let it go. You can even do it opposite. Or somewhere in between. So keep in mind that the velocities will need to be edited as well. They just have to be edited. Because sometimes like over here, let's take a listen. They're really gonna pop out. So you can always grab the line tool and just do some quick edits throughout the entire performance. Again, listening is key and a little goes a long way. And look what we're doing. We're building this mix and it's fun. It's nothing but fun. You can grab some other tools. For example, the parabola tool does a gradual sweep like that. Okay. And... You've got many different shapes and different ways to transform them. Now, I like this. I think it works really well, and I'm happy with that. Let's close this window. Let's go back to our AD2. Now I want to talk about gain staging. So I talked about we did audio to MIDI conversion. We gated it prior to that to clean and get nice, clean snare hits. We converted it. We talked about velocities for the energy of those hits. But don't forget, there's many levels and areas to control your gain staging. Here, I notice in Addicted Drums 2, my main level, I got it down, it's a little quiet, it's at minus 6.47. I'm gonna actually bring this up to Unity at zero because I want my fader, my master, my fader here, my mix, to control the volume for me. This is with our new snare drum. All right, let's, I'm going to mute the vocals just so we can focus on the drums right now. Sorry, dude. All right, here's before. Here's after. Ah, oh, snappy, punchy, right on timing. I love it. Now, here's another tip. Since we're using addicted drums, we can actually audition different snares in real time. While it's playing back, I'm gonna scroll through my collection of snares till I find one that I like, which I, I do like this one, but let's hear some more. Oh, I like this. I think it's important to choose a snare that sounds good, but also complements the rest of the kit as well. Because when it complements the rest of the kit, it sounds more like it's part of that kit. Sometimes you can even take it further and find out what kind of kit were they using. Maybe you have a snare, a snare sample from that kit, or you can create your own snare samples to use too. So I like that. Now, Let's take it one step further since we're talking about audio production here. Let's go to, let's make everything small. I'm going to pack my drums into a folder. If you've been following along with these uh, ProMix Academy Studio One videos, you will have seen hopefully that you can actually pack a groups of instruments into folders just like this. All I did was do a little housekeeping there. And then from there, I'll name that. I'll call it all drum all drums, we could group these, these and we could color code them, do anything you want. Now, why don't we send this to a bus channel, go back to our mixer, and here we, here's our all drums bus channel right here. I'm gonna put in a drum chain that I created that I like right here. And just to explain a little bit about this, you can create chains. We, uh, we talked about that in other videos. I'm using fat channel here, got a little bit of I pass and some EQ and uh, some compressor settings and baby audios tape. All right, let's take a listen to where we are at now. Let me ungroup them and now I can start tweaking the drum mix a little bit.
So here's before without our audio intermediate snare. And here's now. We did some. Here we created a ball bus channel. I put on my favorite drum processing chain. Yours might be different. But you can now hear how this track has been elevated thanks to audio to MIDI conversion. Snare is consistent, sounds nice. And of course, I would further go back in there and tweak the velocity, do velocity editing on each one of the snares that stuck out at me. Once a little too loud, a certain hit or a strike, just find that one, tweak the velocity to taste. And there you have it. All right. The best way to find out, of course, is for yourself. So hopefully you've got a lot of new tips and tricks out of this video. And keep in mind that this process can work on any instrument. I've converted anything. I've converted bass guitars, acoustic guitars, and even vocals to trigger different kinds of sound effects and instruments. So the process will work on anything, but you got to do the housekeeping first to prepare your tracks prior to audio editing. That is really, really important. And just keep in mind the velocities and then just have fun. This technique really keeps you in the creative headspace. And when you get results that inspire you, the quality of your mixes will represent that every time. Thank you for watching, everyone. My name's Carlo Libertini, and I'll see you in the next video. Hey, everyone, and thank you for watching. I hope you learned a lot from this video. Leave your comments below. Like, share, and subscribe.